combating nutrition disinformation and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. And if you're brand new to Jimmy Rants, welcome. Glad to have you. Uh, the way it works, we start off on Instagram Live. So go to JimmyRants.com and you can see all of the links that I'm going to talk about here in the next few moments. Uh, we start off on Instagram. So go follow me on Instagram at Livin Low Carb Man. That's L I V I N L O W C A R B M E N. You can follow me there, watch live, just like all of these amazing people are coming in right now. Then you can watch up to 24 hours on replay on Instagram. If you miss the replay, it does disappear from Instagram, but we throw all the archives over onto YouTube so you can see the past episodes on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, hi, thanks for being here. Um, and then finally, we have a Jimmy Rants podcast, which you, if you haven't checked it out yet, I've been listening back to a few of them and we put a little music bed underneath it. Uh, we get the best of the best moments uh, the highlights of these Jimmy rants. So go listen to those anytime you need to pick me up and encouragement on your ketogenic journey. JimmyRants.com is the website. Today's Jimmy rants is inspired by something that happened in my messages on Instagram last night. So I get a lot of messages, as you can imagine, emails, Facebook messages, uh, messages in my inbox here on Instagram. And I got one last night from a lady. And all she wrote was, my blood sugar's going too low. What do I do? That's literally all she wrote me. My blood sugar's going too low. What do I do? And I'm like, uh, I need some context of what we're talking about here. <laughs> well, what's happening? Are you keto, number one? She said, yeah, I'm keto. I said, so when are you getting these low readings on your blood sugar um, and, and what is low? So then she says, well, I eat a keto meal and my blood sugar after eating the meal will go down to as low as 30 milligrams per deciliter. And so that caught my attention really fast. I'm like, whoa. And she said, and I'm feeling shaky and, and fatigued and all of the signs of hypoglycemia, which is indeed what she was happening, uh, what was happening to her. And so I said, well, are you taking any kind of like medications? Do you have diabetes, type two diabetes? Oh yeah, I have type two diabetes and I'm taking metformin and uh, what's that one? Glyphoside, that's uh, another diabetes medication. And I said, and you're taking those medications while you're eating keto? Well, yeah. I went, call me. So I talked to this very sweet lady on the phone. She is a fan of Jimmy Rants. And I said, can I uh, suggest that you make a decision about what you're going to do um, with those medications if you're also going to eat keto? I said, I'm not going to pretend to be your doctor. Go see your doctor. And she said, the soonest her doctor would see her would be February. Well, guys, she's having these episodes of hypoglycemia every single day. And I explained to her the way that those drugs work, especially the glyphosate. Um, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, but you know what I'm talking about. It's the big long G one that has a Z in there. Uh, and it's a diabetes medication. And what it does, its purpose in the body is to stimulate insulin production in preparation for covering up the carbohydrates that you eat in your diet. And so I was like talking to her and I said, what do you eat? You know, give me a sample of a meal that you eat. And she's talking about, oh, I have, you know, three eggs cooked in butter, throw some onions in there and some cheese, and that'll be a meal. And I'm going, all right, the worst thing in your meal is the onion and it ain't bad. And so you've got to look at it in this way. Keto may be making your type two diabetes medications completely unnecessary. 
So this needs to be a word of warning to all of you who are type 2 diabetics. Maybe you're watching this and you're also trying to figure out why in the world do I feel like crap after I eat a ketogenic meal and you're still taking your diabetes medications just like you did when you were a sugar burner and eating carbs. Your doctor puts you on those meds, and the lady was also on metformin, by the way. Uh, so metformin and glyphosate work together to help manage your diabetes. So a lot of people are put on those meds simply to cover up the effects of the carbs they're consuming. Now, the doctor never says that. The doctor just says, well, you need to be on these meds and they'll manage your blood sugar. They never say, hmm, cut out those things that are actually spiking your blood sugar, carbs, and your blood sugar will naturally come into line. And that's exactly what's happened with this, with this uh, lady that wrote to me. She was under the thinking of, oh, well, my blood sugar is going too low, so I need to be eating sugar to bring it back up again. And I'm going, no, what you're eating is not the problem. The medication that you're taking that may be no longer necessary is the problem. And so I said, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but if I was in your situation, I would give up the glyphosate just for a period of time. Because guys, she has been dealing with daily hypoglycemia since October. And when I'm recording this, this is early January. So a full three months, she has been suffering with hypoglycemia on a daily basis because she's eating foods that don't spike her blood sugar anymore. So she doesn't need an insulin response to deal with the food she's eating because she's not spiking her blood glucose. And so the doctor never told her anything about Oh, well, when you cut down on carbs, you don't need as much medication or you don't need any medication at all. All the doctor said was take these drugs. And far too many people are simply following what the doctor says. And, you know, in general, I suppose that's a good idea. But in the context of doctors don't understand nutrition and the powerful effects of a ketogenic diet, for example, on things like type 2 diabetes, this is serious business. This is why if you're a type 2 diabetic and you're on medication and or insulin, you need to be seeing a doctor on the regular, especially when you first start, because it happens quick. You get on keto, blood sugar starts to normalize very quickly because, oh yeah, by the way, you're no longer stimulating your body to produce blood sugar at the rate that you used to because you've taken away the culprit that was spiking it to begin with. So I gently chided this follower who wrote to me and said, please, please, please do me a favor. I want to see what happens when you test your blood sugar before you have that meal. So she has the egg with the uh, onion and cheese and all the other things that she puts in there. It was all really, really good stuff. Um, and so she has that meal around noon. So she fasts, uh, intermittent fasts from like six or so the night before till about noon the next day. So she's getting a lot of good natural blood sugar lowering effects from that 18 hour intermittent fast that she does. So then she has this meal. So I say, test your blood sugar. I hope she does this today. Test your blood sugar before you eat. Then at one hour after you eat, test that blood sugar. And at two hours after you eat, after you eat, test that blood sugar without the glyphosate. I said the metformin probably would still be okay to take because that's more uh, improving insulin sensitivity than actually direct, directly impacting the pancreas to stimulate insulin production, which is what glyphosate does. So I said, try that. I want to know what happens. And I'm going to predict now that her blood sugar will be normal that she will not have a hypoglycemic attack and that the one hour postprandial will not be a big jump with that meal and the two hour postprandial will be right back to normal again. And this is where lay people, it's so sad that a lay person has to explain this and that the medical profession is being left in the dust trying to pick up the pieces, not understanding why people are getting better. They don't understand nutrition. 
Now, I may not understand all the ins and outs of the medical system. And again, I don't pretend to give medical advice or um, any kind of instruction telling anyone to do anything medically. That's up to you. You and your doctor and your consciousness about what you want to do. But with the information that she's been given and since October, every time she has her diabetes medication, she eats her meal, her blood sugar goes to dangerously low hypoglycemic, she thinks she needs some fast-acting uh, blood glu uh, glucose razor again. And I'm going, look, that should be your clue that keto is healing your diabetes. Your type 2 diabetes is no longer needing those powerful medications. Your keto is more powerful than those medications will ever be. And so, fingers crossed, you guys, that she's able to find the answers that she needs, that she does this test that I suggested, and it's a word of warning. If you're watching this right now and you've gone keto and you're on medications or insulin and you're continuing to take the medications and insulin while you're keto, you're playing Russian roulette with your health because you've got to be monitored by someone who can take you off of medications. I know my friend, Dr. Eric Westman, who takes uh, patients off of medications on the regular in his clinic, he had one lady that was taking 700 units of insulin a day. And within two days of going keto, she was down to under 30 units of insulin. That's how fast it changes. That's why you need to be monitored on a regular basis. If you have type 2 diabetes and you're taking medications, keto isn't harming you. Keto is making you better and making those drugs a whole lot uh, less necessary in your life than they once were. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Melissa. JimmyRants.com, that's right, is the website. If you want to see all the past episodes and how we do this show. Uh, Nikki says, glad to see you back again. Happy New Year. Hello, Nikki. Yes, ma'am. Firewolf Ashton says, this happened to me as well. I ended up in the emergency room and the doctor immediately took me off of my medications, which was metformin and glyburide. I haven't needed them since. And Ashton, this happens invariably on keto. And doctors don't understand. So patients go in and they're like, I'm trying this keto thing. And of course, a lot of doctors will shy you away from it. Well, you don't want your blood uh, glucose to get too low, so be careful with that. And I'm thinking, lower blood glucose is the goal, my dear. What are we doing here? We want people off of medications or greatly reduced in medications. If all the medication is doing is covering up the, the effects of the carbohydrates that you're consuming, shouldn't that tell you that if you just removed the culprit carbohydrates out of your diet, then suddenly the diabetes gets better without medication? Why are alarm bells going off in the heads of medical doctors who are observing this happen? I don't know. Keto neogenesis, gross negligence on the doctor's part to not explain how type 2 medications work. Um, of course, it, if they did, many more light bulbs might come on in patients' heads. <clears throat> I've got a prime example of this. So before he died a few years ago, Christine's grandfather, uh, Burl was his name, uh, severe type 2 diabetic. And we were visiting him in Indiana, him and the family. And he had just had uh, a blood sugar reading where he tested his blood sugar um, and it was like 300 something. And so out of control, type two diabetic, it's probably partially what led to his demise uh, a few years ago. So um, so he uh, had 300 and something. And so he takes insulin at, without any regard for like what's coming next. So he didn't have a meal planned. He just took insulin because that's what the doctor said to do. Well, when you see a high blood sugar, just shoot yourself some insulin. And it was very high doses of insulin. And so he'd, he'd do it. And then he'd have a low blood sugar come in. 
And then he, he'd be like, well, I need to shoot myself with insulin because I'm about to eat again. And we're like, Grandpa, no. <laughs> you know what the insulin is doing, right? The insulin is going to shoot down your blood sugar. Okay, so he would get a hypo, but because the doctor said, take your insulin before you eat a meal, he would shoot himself up with insulin while in a hypoglycemic state. It just, it, and I'm like, did they not explain to you what this does? Nope, they sure didn't. And so that's where we are in diabetes care, you guys. It's why I'm trying to spread the warning here today that if you have type 2 diabetes and you're on medications or you're on insulin from your doctor and you decide to go keto, keto may make those medications and that insulin a whole lot less uh, relevant and necessary in your life than it used to be. Uh, bu -bu -bu, let's see here. Please post about your feedback from her. Yes, um, when I hear from her about what those readings are, um, I will I will very likely do that on my Instagram. Thank you for that, uh, Keto Healing Coach. Uh, Decor by Val says, my doctor said she can lose her license by telling me uh, they don't go to school to learn nutrition. They're trained to push meds. Yeah, um, and she's right. Um, they are pharmacological and physiological uh, doctors are, but I don't think you can lose your license. There's plenty of uh, doctors that I know and are friends of mine that are in the medical profession who are treating patients with diet, um, and they're giving the, getting them off of type two diabetes medication. So that's a cop out, Val, for your doctor to say that. That's a doctor that says. I don't give a crap about your health. All I give a crap about is my career and protecting my hymie. That's what she's saying when she says, well, we can't really do anything with nutrition. We can only talk about drugs. Uh, she said the FDA and the government rule the medical system. The FDA gets kicked back. Well, we, we know that. We know, and the pharmaceutical industry is heavily funding a lot of the, the things that are going on behind the scenes. So um, all you can do is deal with the system the best you can, Val. Bonnie Lene says, do the doctors get paid for every medication a patient is on? In short, yeah. Yeah, they sure do. Uh, because I don't understand why they wouldn't change their diet, even if they don't believe in keto. Something is better than meds. Well, no, uh, Bonnie, that sounds good to you and me. But in the minds of a lot of medical doctors who have been trained, if patient has X disease, you put them on X medication. That's how they've been trained. And so if along comes a diet like keto that makes that drug irrelevant, it's totally, they're totally oblivious to that. They don't know the mechanism of what's going on with keto. That seems so weird because you would think these purveyors of great health knowledge would understand the biochemistry pathway that's going on as to why reducing carbohydrate intake and increasing your level of uh, dietary fat and making ketone bodies and how they help to heal the body so that you don't have as high a blood glucose and insulin levels anymore and so that these medications become irrelevant. It seems so well, duh, to us, but to a mainstream medical doctor who's been trained in the system, all they know is pharmacological and physiological, and they're not putting two and two together about the role that nutrition is playing in the physiological part. It's a sad state of affairs. Thankfully, it is changing. Thankfully, we've got more people with their eyes being open to this. But right now, patients hold the power and have more knowledge, sadly, than even their doctors. Uh, 21 Dances with Dog says, good morning, I'm keto. My doctor put me on berberine. Is it safe? Yeah, I love berberine. Uh, berberine is kind of a milder form of metformin. And so, yeah, berberine is a perfectly fine supplement to help manage your blood sugar levels, much more so than these two medications that this lady that wrote me uh, have, was put on. Uh, Val says doctors only get a couple hours of nutrition in school. If that, um, I had one 
Uh, I've, I've had several doctors who said they've gotten as much as a week, but they were older doctors. The newer doctors, you're right. It's about a two to three hour seminar and they don't mention carbohydrates. They don't mention the role that they play in raising insulin levels and some of the metabolic pathways. They just don't get into that, which again, this is such a shocker to most patients who think their doctors know everything about diet and health that there is. Newsflash. No, they don't, sadly. Uh, Margo with AT says, keto is said to reduce joint pain, but mine now seems to be on fire after six weeks on keto. Well, there's a lot of things that could be going on. If you want to write me separately, um, I'm happy to assist you with figuring out what's going on, but it could be something totally unrelated to keto. Ba, 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 ba. My doctor said she believes in antibiotics for infections. I recommend you find an alternative doctor. Uh, it, I guess because you said no to the antibiotics. Doctors that try alternatives before prescribing. So that's a shame, Val. I think the medical profession has gotten too cookie cutter. Uh, and they're eating the cookies and spiking their blood sugar and insulin levels. But um, too cookie cutter in as much as, well, if it doesn't fit within my paradigm, then you're wackadoodle and you're gonna, you need to get out of my office. You're a non-compliant patient. And I think that is so wrong. This is why functional medicine practitioners and naturopaths and some of these alternative health people that are popping up, uh, people like my wife, Christine, who's a nutritional therapy practitioner, that's the people that's actually getting people healthy again, not the mainstream of medicine. And so that's kind of where we are uh, in the world today. And we just have to know that going in. Robin says, I'm having trouble with my morning fasting blood sugars. They are in the higher 110s, rest of the day 90s. Any suggestions about why my fasting uh, versus is high? I'm strict keto. Uh, it's normal, Robin. If you read my book, The Keto Cure, you would know that a fasting blood glucose in the morning can be elevated in some ketonians. So if you're doing a ketogenic diet, some people, for some reason or another, tend to have a higher blood glu glucose in the morning. So that's what's called a glucose sparing effect. Some people call it physiologic insulin resistance, uh, dawn phenomena, Shimoji effect. There's all these terms, but it's a glucose sparing effect where the body is, for some people, needing to store up the glucose early in the day use it for all the glucose-dependent functions in the body, in the brain, in the heart, all over the body, you have glucose-dependent functions. So see it as a good thing. And the fact that it goes down lower later in the day is your clue that it's a very good thing because it's disseminated throughout the body. Your body gets all the glucose it needs from those for those glucose-dependent functions, and your body is happy. I would predict your A1C is also very normal. So your A1C is the average blood sugar the last three months. And yes, you have the higher in the morning, but by the rest of the day, everything's peachy keen. So don't worry about that. It's not a big deal. Definitely pick up the keto cure if you want to learn more about why this isn't as big a deal as you think it is. B -b 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 Bishop says, my oncologist just told me that I could start counting my calories and moving 150 minutes a week. Uh but don't start any fad diets. So eight weeks ago, I started keto. Good for you, Bishop. Um, and unfortunately, they do a lot of scaremongering by saying, well, don't do fad diets. And of course, they throw keto in there with fad diets. It's, it's not a fad. It's been around for a very, very long time. So uh, kudos to you for starting keto, and I wish you well in your journey. George says the doctors are trained uh, pharmacologists, research how pharmacy and the American Medical Association got started. Yeah, it's a scary story. A dietitian told me she has to work with a holistic doctor so she wouldn't lose her license because she wanted to be more holistic in her uh, patients. Bonnie, uh, yeah, and, and that, see, I think the way the medicine world is going moving forward, we're going to have a variety of people in the same office. So you're going to have a traditionally trained medical doctor. So if you break your arm, that person knows how to put it back together again. You're also going to have a holistic 
a nutritional health doctor who can help you understand what nutrition is and how to best treat various lifestyle diseases like type 2 diabetes and heart disease and obesity and all that. You're also going to have uh, probably a, uh, a counselor of some sort who could help work through some mental health issues. I see that as the wave of the future in medicine where you have all of these modalities which right now are all competing, all coming together under one roof and to help people heal. And you just go to the department in that same clinic um, that's appropriate to what you're dealing with. That's what I see happening um, I don't know if it's happening anytime soon, but that's definitely the dream that I would love to see happen. Uh, ba -ba -ba, I don't recommend this for everyone, but my doctors opened uh, up to me after I told her I d didn't want to uh, immunize my child. When my child was ready to start school, she was tested and was immune to all the vaccines. Well, that's awesome, Val. Alberto says, I hate how doctors used Greek or Latin names for medicine of conditions. Bio, life. Uh, so antibiotics is anti-life. <laughs> if the doctor said, take this anti-life, you would look at him uh, like he's got two faces. Yeah, you sure would. Uh, Vesna says, my doctor's, uh, friend's doctor, excuse me, told her that keto is bad because it makes you gain back all the weight faster after. And Vesna, they assume that you're going on keto as a diet and then you go off of it. So when you don't go off of it, there's never an after. So does that mean you lose weight on keto and you stay on it? You don't gain it back faster after? Yeah, that's kind of funny. So... So the bottom line in this Jimmy Ranch, you guys, if you joined us late, I want to put out a word of warning that keto may make your type 2 diabetes medications unnecessary. I had a lady write to me just last night and she said, I'm getting hypoglycemia down in the 30s. I'm eating keto. What's going on? And I found out she's still taking her type 2 diabetes medications, metformin, and glyphosate, the glyphosate stimulates insulin. So if you're not eating foods that require an insulin response, guess what? You don't need that drug anymore. And so I'm going to have her test her blood sugar, not taking that drug today. I want to I want to see what happens postprandial with the meal. I'll let you guys know uh, what happens with that. But you don't want to mess around with this because keto is such a powerful modality for healing your body from type 2 diabetes. That's it for this episode of Jimmy Rance. JimmyRance.com is the website. And if you want to see how we do this show, we start off on Instagram, uh, Instagram Live to be exact. And so go follow me there at Livin Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're done uh, watching live, you can watch the replay for up to 24 hours on Instagram. So go watch it there. If you miss it on Instagram or if you're not the Instagram y type, hop on over to YouTube. We put all of these videos on YouTube so that you can access all the past archives. And then finally, we have the best of the best moments of this here show on a Jimmy Rants podcast over on Apple Podcasts. So go check that out as well. JimmyRants.com is the website. So until next time, we'll see you then.